<laughs> hey guys, I think I'm live here. Let's see if we can get everything kind of adjusted. That looks pretty good there. So hi. Don't know who will join me tonight, but I'm hoping I'll be able to touch the lives of um, some hairstylists who may need a little motivation. I am here because I want to share a little bit about my story that might help someone else. And it's like I have my glasses off and, oh, okay, they're telling folks that I'm here, so that's pretty cool. So, um, basically, I am here and I see someone join. Hello, Swank Salon. Hi there, welcome. It's like I wanted to say I'm, I'm here because I am excited to share a little bit of my story that hopefully will inspire some other hairstylists um, to keep going and that things are very possible. Hi, waving. <laughs> and um, this timing is for a couple of reasons, actually. Um, I am actually celebrating a bit of an anniversary and it just hit me last week when we were heading into Good Friday, getting ready for Easter. Um, Good Friday um, used to be anyway. I don't know if it still has the same effect on the industry that it used to have because Easter's a little less um, observed, I guess you could say. It's like people are, you know, um, less into dressing up and less into, you know, going to church and creating and making the big dinner and having all the family over. You know, of course that still happens, but a lot of people you know kind of opt out or have something a lot more casual but when i started easter was kind of the breaking of you know that winter time blues you know the time when the industry can kind of be down a little bit because people you know especially if you live in a colder climate they're inside and they're not really thinking about their hair so they're not necessarily coming out as much and so then you have easter coming and it's springtime Hi there, it's like, looks like Anthony Ray. Welcome, and um, forgive me guys, I took my glasses off so I don't have the glare and everything. Plus I like it better without my glasses, but I can't see that well, so sometimes you'll see me kind of peep into the <laughs> into the camera, so forgive me for that. But, um, but basically Easter used to just be um, kind of, you know, Good Friday, the biggest day of the year in the industry, so, um, Hopefully that was the case for you guys, you know, coming and joining me tonight or whenever you're watching, if you're watching on the replay. But um, hopefully you did have a wonderful, wonderful Easter weekend. But that's one of the reasons that I'm here because Good Friday is my anniversary of sorts. So I'll share as I go into my story. And the other reason that I'm here is that I've, um, I've been in the industry for quite a while. Some of you guys know, may know some of my story. I'll share just a teensy bit of it, but I really want to stay focused on, you know, what Good Friday and what transpired for me, how I went from really struggling, um, and that was kind of the turning point. Hey there, Global Trusses, how are you? Welcome. And, um, and really, you know, that was the turning point for my whole, really my life and my career. And so wanted to share that in detail because I rarely share this part of my story. I'm not really quite sure why, but um, I have recently kind of been inspired to help hairstylists. I know that a lot of people go through school, they come into the industry, they're all excited, you know, fired up, ready to rock and roll. And for um, a myriad of reasons sometimes, it's like people leave the industry before they even really get a chance to start. And so I'm feeling like my heart is centered on helping hairstylists to be able to build um, a solid clientele um, in a year or less. And um, I'll, you know, share things. I hope people feel like that may be possible. But I think that it is, you know, with your commitment, your determination and some systems in place that it's possible. So let me take you to my starting point. Um, I kind of fell into the industry, fell in love with the industry, relocated to a brand new area, the Washington DC area, moved there the day after, really the day after I took my um, state board exam in Texas, I moved to DC. <laughs> so I started there with like no friends, no family, no, you know, support, no um, things to build with that a lot of people start with, you know, they've got friends and family in the area and all that kind of good stuff. So I didn't have any of that. Um, I took my time to find a salon that I really wanted to work in and 
was working um, in, the, in an office part-time and that position ended and I was able to go into the salon full-time and I would love to tell you that it was just smooth sailing from there everybody was lined up waiting for Mickey to get started on her hair career but that was not the case it was a very rocky road I um, had a lot of self-doubt and a lot of question marks I'm grateful to my mentors to my mom who's one of my mentors to my salon owner who's one of my mentors and to the receptionists at the salon especially um, all three of them really helped keep me in the industry and keep me going um, so at one point um, I was struggling and I was uh, had come home to notice of eviction on my door and that my car was going to be taken if I didn't make payments and I was not making enough in the salon to be able to stay so I really felt crushed and I felt like my my um, dream would have to be put on the whole on hold and really go get a real job you know quote unquote real job um, with a real paycheck every you know week or two or what have you and so I had tempt before it worked in the office and so I decided that's what I better do pretty quickly is go get a job and start temping again and so I told my salon owner I have to leave and he offered me the opportunity to be able to work um, part-time to build in the evenings and on the weekends hi everybody that's joining us and I was really grateful for that because he actually didn't even be believe in part-time hairstylists. He believed you need to be there and be in order to build. But I think he saw my motivation and that how much passion I had about the industry. So he offered me that opportunity and I thought, okay, in about a year I should be able to get back into the salon on a full-time basis. You know, it's like if I kind of, you know, play my cards right or what have you. And in reality, it ended up being a little more than six months before I was able to get back into the salon full time. And so going back into the office was somewhere around late September, early October. And it was Good Friday that was a turning point for me. I knew that Good Friday would be a really good day in the salon, so I wanted to be in the salon for the full day. So I had um, actually it, it partly arranged and partly it fell into place that the long-term contract I was working on was ending on that Thursday before um, before Easter. So that was perfect, and I knew I'd spend you know all day Friday and Saturday in the salon, you know, hopefully cranking. And um, I went. On Monday, you know, I had planned to, you know, go back into the office, so I had been doing some, some planning beforehand as far as where I was going to work, and I had a job that was going to be closer to home, which was a plus, um, and it paid a little bit less, so it's like it wasn't, you know, as, as lucrative, but it was a little closer to home, so that was good, but one of the other things was that you needed a security clearance to be able to work there. And for some reason, that kind of freaked me out. Like people were going to think I knew, you know, state secrets or something and be chasing me through the streets and trench coats and stuff. But anyway, I had the clearance done and I prepared to start my new job, my new um, temp job on Monday. So I get there and I don't know if any of you guys have worked in an office before, but I'd worked in, you know, quite a few offices and usually people are pretty friendly and, you know, it's like they're, you know, the coffee's over here and this is Susie, this is Joyce, this is, you know, whoever. And so, you know, it's a nice overall atmosphere to be in. It wasn't my dream job, but nice to be in. This particular place that I started the Monday after Good Friday there was no personality. There was nobody that was welcoming. It was like, here's your cube, here's your computer, sit down, do your work. Uh, and it was so absolutely boring. Can I spell boring with like a capital B? <laughs> um, it was absolutely boring. I don't know if any of you guys been there. It's like, if you've been there, just, you know, raise your hand, do a, um, a hand up for me. Um, but I really did not want to be there because it was like, whoa, and I had just come off of, oh my goodness, the best days of my life, being in the salon all day, busy with clients on Friday and busy with clients on Saturday. And so while I was at these jobs, you know, I'd do my job, um, but any free time I had, I'd just spend, you know, kind of, um, almost doodling, but really thinking like, you know, how many clients would I need? What would they need to get? What services would they need to get? How much would that be? And, you know, how, how can I make this work? And so um, there's a book, um, many of you may have read it, may have seen it or what have you, but it's called Think and Grow Rich. And it's a classic by Napoleon Hill, Napoleon Hill. Um, sounding really southern tonight, but um, <laughs> but it's a classic. It's on audio, like on YouTube. Um, it's I think the um, 
whatever they call it, um, as far as the rights to the book have expired, so they um, can actually have it available, um, so you can listen to it for free. Hey everybody, I see people joining, hi. Um, thank you for taking time out of your evening to share my story here. And so, um, anyway, that's what I would spend my, my any free moments that I had when I was at my job. Uh, after I did my work, I was thinking about, you know, what do I need to do to get into the salon? And so on, you know, crunching numbers, seeing, you know, what does this look like? What does that look like? Put creating all these kind of made up scenarios. So anyway, I'm sitting at work, probably somewhere around Tuesday, bored, silly, out of my mind, ready to just like, eh, scream. Um, and I'm like looking at numbers. And remember I told you that I was making less that week than I had been, not a whole lot less, but definitely less. And so I started adding up, you know, how much am I going to make this week? And guess what happened? When I totaled up how much I was going to make that week for 40 hours, five days, eight hours a day of being bored out of my mind, I realized that I had made more on that Friday, that good Friday before, than I was going to make all week. And I was like, I am out of here. I can make this work. And so I surprised myself. I didn't realize it would be as quick as it was. Um, but um, some of you may know, it's like I went on to own salons and a salon and day spa is one of the first African American owners of a full service salon and day spa. And we were had a lot of different accolades, but I'm really proudest of my team and the fact that we were uh, ranked one of the fastest 200 growing salons in the country by Salon Today magazine. And not only once, but for really for three consecutive years. And it's from the growth of my team. It was from me sharing what had worked for me to be able to build so quickly uh, with them that allowed them to build quickly, that allowed them to stay into the in the industry. And um, still today, they're thriving. It's like, you know, I love the, the saying, you know, teach a man to fish and, he, you know, or feed a man a fish and they eat for a day. Uh, teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime. And so I really... Um, I'm proud of my, my team, proud of my salon daughters and um, all that they've kind of taken and run with. And so I'm feeling really compelled to, to put together a program that will help others to be able to have that kind of success so that they can stay in the industry, not have to leave their dream uh, career and be able to, you know, make the money that they need to make and um, be of service. You know, I think all of us come here with our gifts and talents and a lot of times we have the talent in our hands, in our heads, we can see the creative, you know, creativity. We can see, um, you know, the colors and the cuts and the styles and all of these different things. But unless we realize that it's a business and unless we can make a living doing it, then it's hard to stay in it, especially if you don't have a serious support system. I was on my own, so I kind of had to make it work. Um, but it's, you know, obviously a little better if you have a support system of, you know, being able to live with your parents till you build up or being able to, you know, have a spouse that, you know, can carry some of the bills while you're building up. But um, evidently for me, that wasn't an option. And so um, I just want to share some of the things that work for me. I don't know what the interest level is at this point, but I'm kind of putting it out there. It's like I'm looking at doing an online training that is designed to help um, stylists be able to, um, become solidly booked, maybe not completely fully booked, but solidly booked so that you have some, some significant and um, consistent income within a year or less. And so that's my excitement um, to be able to share that with you. It's like I'm looking for uh, a few people, maybe about 25 people to um, come in and do like a beta test with me. So if you are someone who's super motivated about being fully booked, if you are super someone who knows someone who is ready for that, um, I'd love for you to message me. Uh, looks like someone else is that, um, hi there. It's like I told you guys earlier for anybody that's joining me, I can't see because <laughs> I didn't put my glasses on. But um, thank you for coming and welcome and hi. <laughs> And so um, I won't keep you guys long, but if you have questions, I'm happy to answer any questions. So just feel free, you know, to type anything that you'd like to know, like as far as, you know, building a clientele or if you're struggling and what your biggest challenges are. It's like I'm happy to, um, you know, be of service and stay on here for a little bit. I don't want to keep you guys long, but um, but I really wanted to kind of share that 
because I hope that it inspires somebody to say, hey, you know, like if she could do it, then maybe I could do it too. And um, I'm looking forward to being able to share some of the the details, the systems, the things that were put in place to be able to um, do that. And they're, they're proven systems, you know, not only from my own team, but through um, hairstylists and others that I've worked with, you know, other beauty professionals that I've worked with through the years that have taken some of my training. But this would be an ongoing, um, I want people who are interested in, you know, committing to a year because it's like it really, it takes that commitment to be able to make this work at all. It's like if you're not committed, if you're just kind of, you know, got your toe in, it's not going to really work. So um, if you are, you know, serious about making a difference in your life and your income, um, I definitely would love to talk with you. So just message me, you can direct message me. Um, and one of the other things I wanted to share, like at the, um, some months later after going into the salon full time, you know, I told you that I went from, you know, having the notices on my door that they were going to put me out and, you know, my car might have been, you know, taken away and all those kind of things, which is definitely highly stressful. Um, I went from later that summer um, going to purchase um, furniture for my my place, my apartment, um, and did it without credit cards, the whole place. And so it was just pretty miraculous to be able to, you know, walk into a store and pick out the things that I wanted and, you know, basically write the check. And all of that was because I was able to, you know, create and build a, a solid clientele within that um, period of time. And so I'm still really grateful to my mentors, uh, my mom um, has always been a, a cheerleader for me and always helped keep me on track. And um, my mentor, Sally, has passed away, but um, is still with me. And um, so I just feel like it's my time to pay it forward um, some more because I feel like I've, um, you know, been out here doing a lot of teaching and educating for a while, but um, ready to put this together, kick it into high gear. And hi there, I say hair comb. So we don't have any questions tonight. Any comments, any thoughts, any anything? on building clientele and um, getting that consistent in income. I see waves. So if that is um, all there is, it's like I think I shared most of my story, what I wanted to share. And so if you don't have any questions, it's like I guess we'll call it an evening. But um, I'm also thinking about putting together like a community. Let me know what you can. What's the first step? Okay, well, I guess the first step is that you need clients. You already know that probably. Um, and that's a big kind of vague loaded question. So there's a lot of different ways to answer that. But one of the first things that I think that you really need, uh, which is why some of the, the training that I do is set up for almost kind of mindset first, um, is that you need to have clarity in terms of where you're going, what you want, what you want to accomplish, who you want to serve. All those are really key to being able to create the success that you want is kind of starting to narrow down and focus in on what are the things that you really want and some of the why. You know, one of the things that we do is do like goal setting, um, goal setting activities where um, you're looking at, you know, like, what do I want to be able to do in terms of my own life? Like, say, buying the furniture uh, and not having a bill for it. Um, that may have been a goal. And, you know, what would that look like? That would, you know, you know, going and maybe pricing what some of the furniture and stuff that I liked would look like. And um, what about vacations? Do I want to take vacations? Um, do I have kids that I want to go to a certain school or want to participate in a certain event? Do I want to travel? Do I want to um, go to a certain class where I can get become a better hair cutter, be, become a better hair colorist? All of those things. Um, hi there. Looks like someone else joined. Um, all of those things, I think, almost come before. You know, it's like when you get tuned in to something that you're excited about, what I call it is your North Star. It's like you've got to see where you're going, know where you're going before you can start the path of really getting there. And so I would say that's actually kind of number 
letter A before you get to step one. And so step one um, would be, you know, that marketing piece and finding clients. But when you have the clarity as far as like who you're looking for and what services you want to provide, it makes it that much easier. So I hope that's helpful. Um, any other questions? And sometimes I get a little carried away too <laughs> with answering things. And actually that's part of what will be um, part of the program that I'm going to put out um, is that we will have a live Q&A session each month so you can ask all your questions and say, you know, it's like this work, share your success stories. Um, okay, that was very helpful. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. I hope so. <laughs> and um, if you'd like more in terms of, you know, putting those things together just to let me know. And, um, oh, you're very welcome. And, um, yeah, it's like, I think that that should give you some something to chew on for this evening. So, um, one of the things that used to help me when I would see something is just saying that it's, um, I think I see Roy there. Hi, Roy. How are you? Um, that I see, um, now I think I lost my train of thought, so sorry about that. <laughs> But um, really looking at where you want to go, staying focused on where you want to go. And, you know, like I was sharing as far as the book, Think and Grow Rich, you know, thinking about it, putting those pieces together where it really is guiding you and then having some, you know, how do you do some of these things? It's like those are the things that we'll go into setting out those um, guidelines, the goals and all of those things. Hi, I see people joining us. Oh, is that Dave Ray? Thank you, Dave Ray. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate you joining me tonight. Welcome. And, um, yeah, and, and while I'm here, why don't I just dispel a myth and then I'll, then I'll take off and go if we don't have any more questions. But, um, I think one of the biggest myths that I hear and see in the industry that kind of keeps people from, um, from really moving forward in their career and this might be life as well um, in other areas of your life they say you know how you do anything is how you do everything um, but waiting on someone else to provide you clients to provide you really anything um, one of the things that I try to dispel you know when I teach classes on this is the client fairy is not coming there's no one that's going to pull up with a busload of people out front. There's, you know, nothing that's going to happen. Um, a lot of people go into salons and they work with a salon owner and they expect the salon owner is going to bring them every client that they need to be a six-figure stylist. And while I have every, every, um, mm, every thought that you're, salon owner wants you to be highly successful. They want you to be a six-figure stylist. They want you to be producing. There's no way possible for them to provide everything for you. And so it's really about you taking the initiative. How do I get there? What do I need to do? What do I need to do in addition to what the salon owner is able to do for me? How can I learn? Um, where am I spending my time? You know, it's like um, I posted the other day about Beyonce and you know getting ready for Coachella which was a 2 hour 2 hour presentation she started rehearsing 8 months in advance and 8 months worth of time and blood and sweat and energy and organizing and thinking through and you know this could go one way and maybe this could go another way and playing it out and really getting it so when she got up there it's just bam and everybody's like whoa and they think she just woke up like that you know <laughs> she just popped out of bed and did that presentation but it's a lot of hard work and a lot of um, focus and dedication that goes along with it so I hope this encourages someone it's like please feel free to, free to um, tag someone or share it it's like I'm gonna um Hopefully, we'll have fingers crossed, be saving this so I can um, share it on other platforms as well. But um, again, if you are interested in being fully booked, um, then please message me about being part of the test of my program, which will be really, um, um, I'm going to work with about 25 to 30 people at a max, um, 25 to 30 people. And I'm going to put you in at the bare bones, um, pricing at like $14 a month 
which is pretty much peanuts. <laughs> and it definitely will be much more um, as it goes along, um, anywhere from probably $40 to $50 a month or so. So it's a great time to get in if you are serious about it. Um, I will be kind of vetting you to see if you are serious because I don't want to take up the spots with people who may just kind of think that they want to build a clientele. I want the folks that are like, no, I'm doing this. I am doing this. So if that sounds like you or someone you know, um, have them message me. And I want to thank you guys for taking time out of your evening to join me. I really appreciate it. And I'll be doing more um, more lives. I want to get on here, get past. Um, it's like I enjoy doing them once I get started, but sometimes I talk myself out of them. So you might be like that too. But, um, but anyway, I hope everybody has a wonderful evening and I'm very prosperous. And if you do have any questions or anything, feel free to... Um, you know, kind of reach out or put them in the messages of my post for, on Instagram or on Facebook. And on Facebook, I'm under Salon Biz Coach, B-I-Z. So thanks for the love, guys. I appreciate it. See you next time.